Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about little computer people. Okay. <laughs> they prefer to be called little computer people, not midget people. I um, like that. You know, it's funny that you mentioned midget wrestling because that was just what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. They, they've done little computer people. They've done miniaturization on all fronts. In, um, in video games, in the world of video games. And I think, do you consider those muscle games or just the muscle figures in general to be indicative of the general quality of midget wrestling? Muscle games are all horrible. Mm. The ones on the NES, they mm-hmm. sucked. So I wouldn't say no. Uh, uh, little people wrestling or midget wrestling, as it's always known in wrestling, is uh, a... Uh, a uh, staple of classic wrestling shows in the 60s, 70s, and in the 80s, where you would bring the midgets around just like you'd bring the women around. They would You would never have them more than a couple weeks at a time because mm-hmm. people got bored of their antics. So they traveled the country, traveled the world, and it was usually the same troop of chicks and the same troop of midgets. They would, it was about, you know, there wasn't a zillion of them, and so they would travel around. Uh, to these to different venues, sort of like Andre the Giant was the same thing. You could br- use him a couple times, then well, he, he moved on. He was a fantastic worker, though. Well, he wasn't always that good. He was great at the beginning and went downhill dramatically. But he was a uh, feature character. You'd bring him in. Now let me sort ask- of like a, an epically fat guy, like a like a giant haystacks or like American version. Like right. I don't know. I'm trying- well, now, you bring those weird guys in occasionally. Now you say that you know they all they all sort of disappeared, and I think that the ladies, once the scene kind of got cold, they made the transition into roller derby for the most part. Where do you think the midgets all went? That's not true. Uh, they didn't do that. I think roller that they derby, did. Oh, yeah, in your mind, but in reality, they did not. Hmm. You know, it takes a, a whole different set of skills to roller skate than it does to wrestle boat. What do you think you did? You strap on a couple of skates and spin around. You get killed out there. We're going to agree to disagree on this one. And you don't see a lot of of, of uh, apt, uh, gifted little people skaters. Yeah. I've never. Why is I that? I don't know. Any. Can you name it? First of all, can you name any roller derby person ever? No. Okay. Can you name any midget wrestler ever? No. Okay. So you're. <laughs> no. There you go. The conversation over. <laughs> now we'd be remiss if we didn't speak of um the uh midget wrestling event that you saw here in glorious hurricane west virginia not long ago actually was it in hurricane or was it, it was in, in milton it was right in milton. between hurricane and milton right yeah, on the that, line that's right that was the coal miners lounge a couple years ago they and they routinely come back i might add uh it was a nice event i think i'm i think we did a little short uh, show on it when it happened. I think we devoted a whole show to it at one time. So if you look through the archives, you might find it. But to, in brief, um, think of the the bar, the beer joiniest joint you ever drank a beer in, and then bring in midget wrestlers, including a girl midget, and then it, that's exactly what it was. It was filthy. It was not good, but it was entertaining. I will say that. But it was absolutely filthy. I was mm. surprised how filthy it was. Mm. Even by my standards of Phil, this and was where, super where did Phil. this ta- where did this take place? Coal Miners Lounge. The Coal Miners could, Lounge. Look it up on the map. I, I think some people actually shot pictures or didn't believe me, but this is an actual venue, uh, and they actually have a little. It's a bar with like a a, a, a auxiliary building strapped to it, mm-hmm. gingerly, and that's and we this is your there. classic West Virginian bar. Totally all cinder blocks, no windows, all action. The best part of the entire night was seeing our buddies Matt and Chad walk in to the coal miners' lounge, wearing their usual geek attire. This was gold. I, I really wish that, that I really wish that I could have been there. You would have fit right in. Buddy. I know it. I know it. Um, 
we have been uh, instructed from the chat for you to please not slam your mug down anymore. You know, you're not... Slam, yeah, got uh, it. Yeah. Slam the mug down. Got it. Um, so let's talk about what's been going on this week over on the uh, YouTube page, Aaron. We've got... Actually, no. Before we go to YouTube, we got to go to our boy, Deckard Freepwood, who's put up an article here on everythingamiga.com. Aaron, you, you said that this was an article after your own heart. Why don't you tell us about sure it? Sure is. Listen, uh, I... I Deckard contends that you can't really, you can't really uh, play a, a a certain old games on a, on a game pad. You need a proper joystick, mm. and he's right, by the mm. way. And then on top of that, he also contends that some of the new Amiga games and some of the old ones will re- give you a two button uh, answer. Right, so right. what do you do, right? If you've got a button uh, short on your classic joysticks, well, you do what Deckard does. You get you get a little hacky, but mm-hmm. and and you get in there and you rewire this sucker because a lot of these things had two buttons on them, but they both did the same thing. Right, right. That that's for suckers. Mm-hmm. You go in there and you cut that sucker open and you rewire it. And I've actually done this uh, a cu- on a couple of sticks back in the day. Now I, the sticks he does it, I, I don't have. I've never had. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I have done this before. Now I would never cut open one of my precious uh, Wicko's boat, as you know. Mm-hmm. But they do have two buttons on them, so you could conceivably do this if he wanted to but he just he rigs it he shows you it with uh, in glorious detail about uh, rewiring the pinouts for the uh, joystick port uh yeah he does it's good stuff yeah I, I, I love it you know i love that kind of stuff but yeah absolutely so it's right up my alley man. yeah very cool uh thank you deckard so much for uh for writing that article for us and again uh if you are interested in um and writing an article for everythingamedia.com and you support the show through Patreon, send me a message. Well, you can write up an article and uh, have it for the world to see. Yeah, man. All right, Aaron. Now let's go over to the YouTubes. All right. What we've got this week, let's talk about uh, the show we put up last week on R. Sinclair uh, to start off. Boy, I love this one, Boat. Mm. I mean, I, I love it. In fact, all week, I haven't been able to stop singing the song. And this was our episode on Minder yes. for the for the ZX. Uh, you know, I, I uh, uh, have become obsessed with it. So it just I don't know what it is about it, but it appeals to me at a at a, at a, at a very weird level. Mm-hmm. But I, I do enjoy it. And and the game was uh, goofy, uh, but uh, but it did sort of play along with the uh, uh, part of the show anyway. And uh, it, it was, there was enough wackiness in it to where I thought it was, t- I was it was okay. But uh, for the full scoop. Uh, head on over and watch our YouTube video or, or grab it off of Anchor uh, because I, I really enjoyed that. Plus, we get into the show, which is that's the part I really wanted to do, as you know. Yeah, yeah. And you and you you were sort of a little iffier on it, but I, I dug it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what that's what's great. It takes all kinds to make the spectrum go round, as they say. You got that right. Yeah. Uh, next on the docket, and I actually billed this last week when it wasn't released, but I'll bill it now. Okay. This thing's getting a lot of action. It's a uh, brutal, the brutal one, brutal Barracudas. Uh, Gary Hucker top ten and played Amiga games. Uh, as you know, uh, the brutal one is sort of going into uh, and talking to different uh, Patreons and get and making videos on their top ten games. And this time it was the Huck, the Huck's turn, uh, the uh, guru from way down under. Mm-hmm. And this was his top ten games. Uh, and and a, a, a lot of people watch this, so uh, a, I don't know if it means your games are more or less popular, but it's still cool. And Bruto, of course, does a great job on these. We always enjoy these. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. And uh, he's, he's done several of these. He did Kim Justice's a while back. He, he's just recently done Chris Folds. Uh, so there's plenty of these out there if you want to take him up, and more than that. But those are just the most recent ones. Um, let's talk about... Uh, well, actually, I don't think we showed this last week. I think we just recorded it, showed it on the stream. Right? Your unboxing, right? Uh, special. You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. So uh, this has been this. I believe that this was our first, um, our first show apart. This this happened on, uh, and so sad. Yeah, so sad. And um, but uh, and so I didn't get a chance to uh, to actually make it public until last week. But anyway, we got a package, and I believe that this package was from Zebedee's Magic Roundabout. Is that right, Aaron? 
I believe so. It's been my brain's tapioca boat, so I don't remember. I know I lots of good magazines came out of that package, and I've got them sitting right over here to my right. Yeah, yeah, and, and I love oh, them. the thing that I enjoyed was all the Atari action, the Antic joystick or the Antic magazines, and there's even an APX magazine in there, which is really really awesome. It's so much uh, more high production than I would have expected, considering uh, what APX was. So um, anyway, I've already had a ball going through these these old magazines. Yeah, I finally got these to you. It took it took. What, three oh, weeks yeah. after we well, got we it, and do, I gave him his joystick. We had to do the top secret switcheroo, you know, yeah. social distancing. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Zeb mentioned to me that one of the reasons he was getting rid of these uh, these Amiga magazines was that it was they were difficult to read because the typing, the type was kind of small. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I was like, huh. And I and I have to say that it is, a, for an older guy, it is, I hate to say it, but it is a little small. Mm. I felt the same way. But by God, you know me, I stuck it right up oh, to yeah. my face, you know, <laughs> at, where you could lick the text. And then I went I went through them. So I've really enjoyed them. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Um, so anyway, we we appreciate the, all of, yes. our, of our listener goodies. Yeah. You're all super nice. We really appreciate it. Now, let's talk about uh, last week's ARG. Uh, uh, me and the Brent. Uh, and this was a great suggestion. We, we picked chat choice on the wheel, and the chat room decided for us to play games where you play the villain, mm. uh, which was, I thought was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and so uh, we ended up picking up, I picked Rampage, and Brent, and the Brent picked TIE Fighter for, on the old DOS machines. Man, we had a lot of fun. I picked, I picked uh, Rampage on the Sega Master System, and we had a lot of fun uh, playing these games. And kind of going back, and and especially you know with Tie Fighter, that was a game I really remembered quite a bit from back in the day because it was one I was really anxious to play when it came out. And man, it still it still delivers with a lot of good gameplay. Uh, and Rampage uh, for the Sega Master System is it's got to be in the top two conversions. I mean, surprisingly so. It's really good, wasn't it, Bo? Yeah, I you know the I'm a you know a shill. For the Nintendo systems, most of the time, but the the N- yeah. actually both of my favorite systems, uh, the Atari Eight Bits and the NES, have really kind of horrible conversions of Rampage. The the winners, Lazy. yeah, the, yeah. the winners in this are definitely the Coco and the Master System for sure. And who'd have thunk that? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's now. Let me ask you: of the two, which one do you prefer? I've probably played more of the Coco version since we covered that yeah. on the show. Um, and it does have three plays. Yeah, yeah. I never got a chance it's, to try that out, but uh, they're both they're both very good, very good. I think it's the only home port that has the full three players. That's that's that the Coco versus was a real sh- shocker, but the the Master System, boy, it looks and sounds great mm-hmm. and plays plays very well. So if you're into that stuff, uh, give us a jingle uh, on uh, this week on that show and this upcoming show uh, that we've got going. We'll be taping this one Sunday. I'm just gonna leave it uh, leave it open there. You can just tune in to see what we're up to. Cool. Um, I think boat. Oh, we do have you do actually release a couple more things uh, from your ZX uh, gun series, right? Uh, if you, <laughs> I love these. Talk, tell us about. So, these, if, if you want to check out some more uh, Magnum games for the ZX Spectrum, uh, th- this is basically I did like this really really long stream with all the loading times and everything, and all that's archived on Twitch. But I cut these up a little bit. I took out most of the loading times, and you just get the game action. Uh, I've got Hella Chopper here, which is an awesome name for a game. Um, yeah, it is. And That's great. Helichopper, the first level was incredibly difficult. It's got rubber duckies. I thought it was going to be easy. It wasn't. It was not easy at all. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I played Helichopper and I played a Solar Invasion. So check Ooh, those out if the Spectrum good. is your bag. Yeah. And who is? Are you kidding? Yeah. It's everyone's it's bag. Everybody's bag. It's great. So yeah, that that looks like that's pretty much uh, what we've got out this week. You got anything to add to that? Bro? I got nothing, man. All right. Let's well, roll uh, on. Literally, right, man. with the gamble train. Let's see what's going on in this week's Amiga News. Aaron, okay. we're going to start things off with a bang. Tenmark is back this week, and he's tackling an issue that all of us have had to deal with, being Commodore Amiga owners. How the heck do I put a USB drive on this thing? Now, yeah. the USB as a peripheral, do you remember the first computer that you had that had USB, Aaron? Uh, Sure, sure. It was, uh, gosh, it was one of my, it was one of the early, uh, Pentiums, I think I had. Well, let's put it this way: the computer I've got here now, the uh, HP uh, Vectra VL, uh, has has uh, USBs on it, and this thing is a Pentium One. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was right about that era where they started popping up. And I remember when they, you know, we had most of my friends and me used the USB for joysticks early oh, yeah. on, that, and that was it. Yeah. 
and and uh, uh, we hated it mm-hmm. for that because uh, we were always afraid that the joysticks were going to pop out because that we were used to stuff that latched in and screwed in. Yeah, and stuff that wasn't you know, hot swappable that could mess you up. If, that's, yeah, that's true. well, you know, gotta think we were like. Uh, Hot swappable is all well and good, but you know when your USB support DOS was practically zero, you know early on, yeah. and so a lot of a lot of times you had to use Windows to really get any sort of decent USB support. So we most of us stuck with our uh, joystick uh, ports, you know the old joystick port for the PC, and it kept that for years and years. I kept mine into the XP era, mm. uh, so that so but that's mainly what we used it for. But yeah, I remember it. Uh, you know, fairly vividly. So that means and it, that, you know, the Pentium 1 era, I'd say that's around 95, 96, somewhere around there. So it, uh, it yeah. would have been conceivable for um, if the Amiga could have just held on for just a little while longer, if they could have released something just past the 4000, that they could have released commercially an Amiga with a USB drive or a USB port. Yeah, yeah, they were a few years early for that. But, you know, the funny thing, uh, Boatster, is when they... Uh, when they put PCMCA slots on the 1200 and the 600, I was really surprised uh, by that because that was sort of a tech, it was obviously a laptop te- a laptop technology. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know anyone that had a PCMCA slot on their PC. Right. Like they're you know they're big. I mean I'm sure there's cards and whatnot. There's cards for everything, but I didn't know anybody that had mm-hmm. one. And when they made those for the PC, I thought or for the Amiga, I thought to myself, this is an odd choice. And one of the reasons I thought that was because. PCMCIA slot stuff was so expensive, you know, at the time. And it was something I never really looked into, right. you know. And so I was like, well, and of course, they did it. They had the best intentions because that was the hot swappable sort of port of the time that they could use. But even by the time that the Amigas came out, the PCMCIA uh, port was, you know, it wasn't a huge deal. I mean, they, they kept them in laptops for a long time. But yeah, you can't, no one's going to say that that's the equivalent of USB because it is absolutely not. So all that said, have you ever, as a current Amiga owner, had the urge to install a USB port onto your machine? Had the urge to do it? Brother, I did it. Look right here. <laughs> I've done it already. I've got these. Uh, if you'll recall, I shot a video on these a while back. Uh, here, Here's the receiver for it. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is a USB uh, adapter that goes on your joystick ports. And let you use certain USB peripherals on your Amiga. Oh, cool! Uh, I'm, I'm using this uh, this Super Nintendo knockoff wireless wireless brother. That's why I got it. Plus, I've got the uh, wireless the wireless mouse right here. Mm-hmm. Which this thing? Are you kidding me? This is the this is the way you do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was I watched uh, Ten Mark's video with keen interest to see. Now he went a whole different route, of course, by actually getting a proper USB on a uh, on a card, mm-hmm. you know, and so and so you can you've got a whole world of of peripherals that open up that I obviously these things are strictly for mouse, joystick, keyboard. That's pretty much all you would use on the ports that I've got. The stuff he was doing, he's hooking up you know scanners and he hooked up a uh, uh, what was that thing that old the old PDA he hooked that up and he even hooked up Bluetooth that didn't work. So but I mean still that they gives you a lot more options. I don't have to use any sort of program for this. Uh, so that's the what the advantage is over what he's using is he has to they has to boot up the workbench to load a program. The guy that made these actually they just they just work. Mm-hmm. You don't have to that's actually really do nice, anything. Yeah. I'm assuming these are sort of like those. Uh, uh, what who makes those that stays for the consoles both to give you oh, a while. Eight, eight bit do. Yeah, eight bit do. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm sure they work along the same lines as that. But still, this one, I found this quite an interesting uh, video that Tinmark put together. I like the idea of, of having a USB in your Amiga and just trying to plug in wacky stuff just to see what happens. Yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's the way you do it. And Doug did a good job. Uh, up next, there is, you know, the, of course, the official DJ. Everybody in the UK is a DJ. I don't know if you knew this or not, Aaron. But it seemed, oh, yeah? it seemed like most of the people that I knew uh, when I lived in, in, in the UK were a DJ on the weekends. And I still see pictures of their shows. And I don't, I don't know who's going to these shows because it seems like maybe just all the DJs, they all get together. Anyway, there's a lot of DJs in the UK. And Hoffman is one of them. Uh, this guy, I, I just found out about this guy. I guess he's been going on for a while. He can be found at twitch.tv oh, yeah. slash DJ Hoffman. He's got, uh, looks like dual 1200 setup with, of course, your Mixmaster console right there in the middle. 
and he's doing the DJ thing. Um, and, uh, you know, if you are looking for some more uh, action in terms of, you know, getting your getting yeah. your rave on with the Amiga yeah. and, and Ravi's, uh, Ravi's sets, you know, you're in between Ravi's sets, uh, check out DJ Hoffman. He's, he's rocking and rolling. This thing came from May 3rd. I heard about Hoffman. Uh, he's been around for a while. Uh, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> listen, DJ is awesome. I sort of feel like a DJ with these uh, with these headphones. You are a DJ. Off, you are what you play. I need to, I need to get my uh, D. What's that game I've got? DJ for Hero for the Xbox. DJ Hero Two. I need to get my double turntable out. I'll be ready to go. You should. You should. What you do is you get you put your Mac on one side of it and you put the XEGS on the other side. DJ Hero Two console in the middle. And then you just pretend, <laughs> pretend that you're involved in them all. <laughs> That's it. Just play some mod. Yeah. <laughs> and dance around. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Drop some ecstasy. Sounds good. Sounds great. And finally, Amiga Love has a new article out. He has an exclusive interview with Eric Lee, who was creator of Busy Bee Software and the right stuff for the Commodore 64 and 128. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I think that, uh, you know, Amiga Love tends to interview the people that are sort of off the radar of a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of people who who maybe you'd think to interview, but the stories are always real interesting. I got to hand it to Amiga Love that whoever he interviews, um, they always sort of it's like a time capsule of, of of the way that the scene was. And of course, this is this is not Amiga. This That's is a great picture. Yeah, this right. this, this is, right. but it 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 is neat. I just. There's something about the early era of distribution and computer software that, you know, call it the Ziploc bag era uh, that yeah. I find really appealing when it comes to, you know, you can tell that all of the documentation and stuff was hand drawn and everything like that. So uh, not, not that. strictly Amiga related, but I highly uh, advise you to check out uh, AmigaLove.com to, to read this interview. I really enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, man. Hey, one more thing I want to touch on. I don't know if, uh, and I'm sure this is sort of like uh, uh, preaching to the choir on this but if, if uh, you haven't been watching or listening to the retro hour uh they've had some real good shows here i mean they always have great shows uh, dan and ravi and the third guy whose name i can't ever remember and i apologize to him but i'll get it one of these days uh but uh, they've had they've had shows talking to people from uh, bullfrog psychosis uh from some core design they re they had one last week on the making of the new uh retro uh or streets of rage four mm -hmm. i don't know if, which is a Big big deal oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. in the community, uh, and it's boy what a huh, what a beauty it's a by the way. Oh man, mm -hmm. oh man. There's a scene where you go through the stained glass. Holy cow! I've never seen effects like that. It was awesome. Uh, so uh, you should check them out. They're, they're a, a great bunch, and they they've been really knocking them out of the park with some of these uh, guests they've had on. They've had a heck of a run. Yeah, in fact, I think didn't they just have the guy from Games Master on there not too long ago too? <laughs> they they did. Yeah. In fact, I think that, I think that debuted today. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I just saw it pop up, and yeah, that that also looks great. So uh, if you I know Games Master isn't a thing over here, but I'm sure the people over in the UK are all over that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's Amiga news. The gamble train is pulling off into the sunset, and Aaron. It's time to return home to the cozy confines of your little computer house to talk about little computer people. It is apropos that we're both home in our homes mm -hmm. to talk about because we are little computer people ourselves, we are. Boat, in a in a way, in a huge way. So, Boat, I'm guessing this one's one that you had at least heard about. I'd heard of this one, yes. I had heard about it too, and I had uh, had a had a uh, cup of coffee with it, uh, as it were, back in the day. So uh, this also is known as uh, House on a Disc. Yes. Also, you could call it uh, Activision's Little Computer People Discovery Kit. <laughs> they had a bunch of angles they worked mm -hmm. with this boat. This came out all the way back in '87, mm -hmm. uh, Boatster, uh, and was on a disc. Published by Activision, which was only fitting uh, if you consider that this is a David Crane joint, uh, and along with Sam Nielsen. David Crane, of course, of Pitfall uh, fame, Pitfall 2, Ghostbusters. Uh, he did the Activision tennis game, if you'll recall, and a, a slew of other games. Super duper legend, a genuine legend, Boat. Uh, and this was his effort to uh, bring a, 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 a simulated... Uh, little guy to your computer, and I, you know, we'll see how that went. So this was coded by uh, Tim Wilson, sorta. I, it's funny when you look back and try to determine 
who did some of this stuff? I f- saw conflicting uh, reports, Boat, so your mileage may vary on that. It was also said to be coded by Gene Smith. Uh, he actually did some stuff on the Amiga, including one of my favorite games, Bar Games, Boat. Oh, you know, I okay. Love that I didn't one. realize yeah. there was the connection there. Uh, the graphics were Hillary Mills, and the music on this was done by Russell uh, Loblet. Uh, he was responsible for the music in A Train, which that game seems like it's got you written all over it, Boat. That A Train, uh, Hacker Two, Poor. Uh, he did some of the songs in Portal. Really? Boat. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Sim Life is another one which we actually we did that one a while back. Uh, this uh, got released on a, a lot more systems than I thought, Boat. I'll be honest with you. Um, this was on the Amstrad, uh, the Apple II, uh, the Atari ST, Boat. I was surprised by that one. Uh, the C64, which is sort of the version that I hear a lot of people talk about. Mm-hmm. The NEC, PC88, uh, the the Famicom Disk System, Boat. Yeah. There's a weird one for you. Uh, the uh, Sinclair Spectrum, of course, got a, got a version as well. And this, from what I've heard, was an up converted up from the uh, C64 version. I'm guessing that either the Apple or the C64 version were the uh, premier title. Uh, I believe one. that the C64 version came first, and everything grew out of that to a later or aggressor uh, extent. I, uh, the, yeah, I think you're the, right. Uh, the Famicom Disk System version, I believe, features a uh, a, a totally different house and uh, a lady computer person. Not a, yeah, not a man. that's isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, they got they they got a they got a tweaked version. Mm. It's funny. I've been playing a lot of Japanese stuff here recently. There's a lot of uh, games that you're used to playing that get tweaked when they go to Japan, which would make sense. But I mean, some of it's more radical than others. That's a pretty radical departure. Mm. But I, I, I haven't not played it. I don't know how different it is. So, what is this game? Um, this is a game. I guess the best way to describe it would be a. Um, well, Bo, why don't you take a stab at the best okay. way avoid a life simulation slash so this gentle is, uh, creator? Yeah, imagine um, having a dollhouse inside your computer, and you've got an autonomous doll that that wanders about, uh, that that goes about his business more or less autonomously. Uh, you have a limited number of things that you can do to interact with your little computer person. But the great majority of the game is just watching your dude roam about the house, leave the house, come back into the house. And he does all kinds of different things. Um, He can uh, listen to music on his stereo. He can watch television. Um, He can, uh, well, actually, let me me describe the house uh, for you, sort of floor by floor. On the ground floor, you've got uh, your living room. And uh, inside the living room, you've got an easy chair, and the your your dude can sit on the easy chair. I know I'm thrilling you with this description. Uh, the phone can ring. You can you can call your little. You can put a call through to your little computer person. Um, you can. Uh, there's a fireplace there in the main entryway. Your little dude can build a fire. And you've also got a kitchen on the ground floor with a with some water, and you can get water. Um, your little computer person, I don't believe I ever saw him cooking anything. Like, I don't believe that I he... I didn't yeah. either. Um, on the second floor, you've got a bedroom with a dressing room or a closet. Uh, you've got a bathroom, and you've got, I guess you'd call that a den, or I guess it's the computer room. Um, and then on the top floor, you've got your uh, sort of the man cave, or where you've got the, uh, the, the, the TV, the stereo, there's a piano, uh, and a poker table. Uh, so these are the, the three floors of your house. Uh, it, it does not matter uh, what, uh, you know, like your your person himself, I guess, uh, is coded in such a way, at least on the C64 version, that every person would be slightly different. Uh, they'd have like a different name and, and different things, and it would be coded via some sort of, you know, serial number would give him attributes. Uh, in the later yeah. versions, they were all the same. So that... that well, now, uh-huh. now I have heard... Uh-huh. I heard that the the uh, okay. So the way the this ships is kind of strange. I read that the the C sixty four tape version of this randomly generates a new guy uh, on like every time you, you play need a new guy. Right. Okay. I don't know if every time you play, but I, you know. And then uh, allegedly, all the other versions have a different have some sort of manufacturing gimmick or a uh, or some kind of serial on the uh, and so that each guy 
is an individual for everyone. Oh, that's okay. what they okay. that's what they say in the now well who could say? Right. Like what was you do you remember your guy's name? Oh, geez. I should have I should have remembered it, but I don't. My guy's name was Tucker. Okay. Okay. That's a good name. I'll I'll watch some Amiga videos online and their names were different. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be two hundred and fifty six different names. And it's supposed to be uh, not only is their names different, but their personalities and their attributes are different. Okay, it's hard to it's hard to validate this, right. but I will say I watched a couple different Amiga videos of people playing this after I, in fact, I had it running while I was watching mm -hmm. them, and their guys did act differently than mine. I will say that. Well, like, but they did stuff I've never seen my you guys. You know, it's did. really hard to say. I don't doubt the marketing materials that came with this game. However. If you programmed a series of actions, let's say you programmed in 5,000 actions that your little computer person can do, and you made it random, you just, you know, he does one of these 5,000 actions, it would appear that each individual little computer person was different and had a different personality. Because the, 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 the chances of your guy acting exactly like another guy would be very small. You're right. That much said, this is David Crane. And he's he's absolutely on a different level. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not. I would not be surprised if he come up with some kind of crazy oh, algorithm sure. or something yeah, yeah. that would give these guys personality traits like that 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 others didn't have. Uh, but it, I, if you read the docs for this, I read the C64 docs and the uh, Amiga docs for it uh, because they've mistakenly got the C64 docs over at Lim, and I had to go over to Hall of Light to get the uh, the Amiga docs for it. Uh, but uh, they really, the whole documentation is, it's a lot like getting a Cabbage Patch kit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gives you the whole scoop, and they never break kayfabe on this. The, uh, the, There's guys, the, 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 yeah. the way that the, this is the, one of the grand traditions of classic computer gaming is you get the manual, and this is one of the games where they make the manual the game. Like the manual yeah, they, is, is it, it's set out like a scientific expedition into the mind of the little computer person. It talks about their history. It talks about how they were first discovered. It gives you a general com uh, like computer history lesson. Um, and then it gives you uh, very in-depth reports on every room in the house. And it's, yeah. it's laid out in such a way that it's a joy to read. And it brings the game to life. This would be one of those games that if you went over to Circuit City at the mall, and you you know, and you're in the car, and you rip this thing open, and you can't wait to get home because you're reading through this, and you're like, "This sounds awesome! I can't wait to see my little computer person." And then you get home, and you may have a, a different experience once the game actually gets going. But there, the, this was much like it reminds me of uh, the um, the Leisure Suit Larry and the uh, oh, it's the one where he is on the island and the the book is done in the same way it's done like a travel brochure you know and it talks about all the various yeah. things so uh, that part of this is is very well done the and the, but the and the funny thing about the, the the book is in the back of it it's got a place for you to write down your guy's names your, his at or his name his attributes. His, his like uh, dates, what he's up to, and you can take all this stuff, and they encourage you to send this to Activision, almost like the adoption right. gimmick on the old it's, on the old. Which I love that they learned some uh, lessons from the Cabbage Patch Kids for sure. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, well, where's the game at? Well, there is not really a game here. This is more of a interactive fishbowl. Mm -hmm. I'm almost. Uh, you have certain bizarre commands. And when I say bizarre, I mean I don't know who decided these these keyboard commands, but they're goofy, and they're I, I, like there was a million different ways it could have done this. Now I'll, I'll grant you it's eighty seven, but without the rule book in your hand, you're boned because you got these these are like they're all like control and something, mm -hmm. and there's like about eighteen commands plus. You can type in stuff to tell your guy. To, now he may or may not listen, but you can tell yeah, him stuff to it's, do. It's very strange in that there are keyboard commands and a text parser. You rarely see it's, both of those things. Which, listen, that adds to the mystique of this game. Yeah. If this was a game where you just hit the keyboard, like let's go over some of the keyboard commands. So you can, he's got a dog. Okay, at least my guy had a dog, and the guy I watched all the people I had. Yeah, watched, if, had if dogs, you so hang out that, long enough, the dog will appear. Yeah. So. Uh, you can you can have dog food delivered, all right. You can have food delivered. Now, I never had food delivered. Like I would hit the button, but he never and he never seemed like he wanted to eat or needed. He would look in the fridge sometimes. You know, in that, yeah, I had the same experience, and the same goes for you can press I think Control W 
and for water. For water. But the, yeah. the thing is, like, I left this thing on for a long time, and I never once yeah. watered my dude, and he didn't get sick. Like, I was watching some videos on you, because I was like, am I doing something wrong? And on YouTube, you're like, I saw, I saw a guy, like, if you don't, if you don't water him, he turns green and he gets sick. The only, gets mad, the only dude. thing I can think of is that maybe I just didn't play this game long enough to experience that stuff. Yeah, I, I, the the time this the time for because I would leave this on. I left it on overnight mm -hmm. one time just to see what was going on, and I I, I, it, I rarely saw him get neutral, and I never saw him get mad. Of course, I attended this guy's every need. So he's both mentioned he's got a uh, a record collection. You could have a record delivered to his door. Uh, you could also have a book delivered to to his door. You could also uh, interact with him in a, in a kind of an odd way. This is kind of the weirdest way. When he's sitting in his easy chair, if you hit a certain key combination, uh, it might be control P. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this retractable hand comes out yeah. of the wall and gives the guy like a massage. It's really weird. And it, in the book, it calls it a, like it calls it a a, a petting, mm -hmm. I think. But like he's got a pet. But, I mean, this is a guy with a this is a guy in like a cardigan with a mustache. And the thought of I'm petting this guy is a little There's weird. There's no use to getting so I, into heavy petting. Yeah, <laughs> very good boat. So, but the guy will sit there and he 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 likes it, you know, I, you know, huzzah. Uh, you can also occasionally, uh, you can, this guy will sit down at the typewriter up in the loft and he will type out a message to you. So now you can ask him to send you a message. He can, or he'll just randomly send you a message. He only sent me two kinds of messages ever. Okay, one, uh, I would like to have this. Mm -hmm. Right, two messages about his dog. All the time about his dog. Now again, I don't know what did your guy he, say? He you? uh, he said I would like I would he said uh, he was very polite. He said I would appreciate a new record for my record collection. Yes. I think that yes. was the only thing I got from him. I mashed or you know you, you, it says in the manual it's like please be polite when you write to your your little computer person. So I said please write me a letter. And the thing is you get no there is no acknowledgement either through the the GUI or from your person that that your command has been acknowledged. It sort of just disappears yeah. into the ether. And sometimes he just doesn't do it. Like I tried to get him. I'll try to everything. Go wash your dog. Mm -hmm. Take a bath. Go to bed. I never got him to do any of that. So I never got my guy to go to bed. Yeah. I'm assuming he can, but I've never seen that happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did get him to play the record once, but no, most time I'd be like, play your record. Or he'd ask for a record. He never played a record, hardly ever. I did get it one time. He sent me a message. He says, he go. He goes, you know, I'm a great typist. He says, I'm also a great pianist. Mm -hmm. So I said, play me a song on the piano. And he sat down, and he played this awesome tune. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Now, sometimes, if you want, you can get this sucker to play games with Maybe you. Maybe you can. I did. I, I, got, I played games with him. I played all the games. Okay. Uh, so what you can do is sometimes he'll just ask you to play. It's funny. If you, if you don't attend this guy for a while, I noticed this. He will go up to his games box, which is up in the mm -hmm. attic. He'll fil pilfer through it. He'll ask you to play a game. And if you don't say anything, he pecks yeah, he on the screen. On the, yeah, I saw it. Like, hey, jerk. And then if you don't do anything then, he just walks off. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But you can play games that so you've got. Uh, I know I'm going to forget some of these. There's poker. There's war. There's blackjack. Anagrams. There's this, like, anagram game. And there's, um, I know there's one other one, Boat. I can't remember what the other one is. But he'll play... He'll pull, I used to mostly play cards with him. And what you get is he will he'll go downstairs to the kitchen table, and you can have games of poker, the most basic, simple games. There is betting mm -hmm. and anteing, but there's it's not like uh, uh like the I, I couldn't see how war ended. It just sort of went <laughs> on it forever. It's much much like war in real life, you know. <laughs> At least the other ones because you couldn't bet on war, but you could bet on the other one and uh, on poker and blackjack, and and you Clean could eventually out. lose yeah. all your money. Yeah. Uh, and he and he would uh, the game uh, when you play with him he'll you'll get used to like he'll be like okay draw a card ace oh that's a great card oh an ace oh no you know uh, uh, you know that kind of crap but it was it was very repetitive mm -hmm. and then once you quit he'll just take his cards and stuff and just go back up the stairs and put them away now uh, one thing we should we should mention this is that at the beginning of the game. You sit there for 10 minutes or so and can't do anything. Right. All your guy does is come in and just walk around the house. That's all he does. And that's in the rule book. It says, listen, you're you're moving this guy into your computer 
And so he needs time to figure out where everything's at. So for 10 minutes, you just sit there. And so that's what you do. You can't do anything. You can't talk. You can't do jack squat. All he does is just walk around. Uh, he must have went up and down those stairs. And, and, the, and the, I probably played this game, you know, I had it on a lot. But I mean, sat there and watched it and actually interacted with it maybe three or four hours this week. And I bet this sucker went up and down these stairs 10 million that's times. That's why I say so thin. He must, he must have calves. That are unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I mean, this guy's, and I think, yeah, I think there's uh, four flights of stairs in his house, mm-hmm. you know, so this guy gets it. And plus, he he also does some calisthenics, which he's doing now if you're watching at home. He did, my guy did this a lot too, a lot of jumping jacks and stuff. But uh, what I learned to not like was the fact that to do anything, it took this guy forever to walk up and down these stairs. And that guy, there are parts of this game that just didn't work for me, but what, what, let's get your thoughts on it. What, what were your thoughts on playing it or experiencing it or whatever? Well, you know, I, I, I chose this game. This was our inaugural uh, pick for you and I both suggest games and the AGSC picks, picks from that list. And I chose this game because it, it was unique. It was interesting. I couldn't think of another game that was like this on classic computers. Um, I was partially... Um, was partially motivated to pick it because on my last Spectrum stream, uh, I had a video of the old Johnny Castaway screensaver playing on, uh, and and I love that thing. When I was in college, I would put that on, and I would you know I would watch it while I was watching TV, and that is really where this game comes apart. Is that this game tries to do something that it shouldn't do? What this game should have advertised itself as as Little computer people, a, uh, a laboratory of microscopic relations uh, on your desktop or something like that. This game should not have included any interactivity whatsoever. Um, you sh- this should have been the equivalent of like an After Dark screensaver or something like that. And what they should have done instead, I know that this comes to us from the days before screensavers, well, at least as far as I know. Um, but they could have still made this interesting by giving you more control in an indirect way. For example, they could have let you at the beginning, first of all, they should have compacted the time in this game more. It, It should have been like, as soon as you load the game up, there's action. There needs to be something going on in every room of the house or in at least one room of the house all the time. And they could have done this in any number of ways. First of all, only having the one computer person, that's no good. You need to have it's a, sad. yeah, you need to have <laughs> at least two people in the house. You should have an option to have more, okay? It is not beyond the computing powers of the of the maybe if not the Commodore 64, definitely the Amiga to put some more people in this house and have them walking around and doing different things. I mean, we've seen enough stuff even on the spectrum. Like think about Gandalf, think about Thorne sitting down and lighting his pipe and singing about gold. You know, there's tons of things going on all at the same time on lots of different games. So that is number one. Number two is you should be able to uh, call up certain events to happen and watch the players, how they interact to them. So for example, what if you could have um, like something like, say you could call up like pipes bursting in a room and then you watch the little computer people, ah, you know, the, you know, panic doing things. One of the guys comes up and he fixes the pipes, you know, and you, you, you watch little things happen. It's like setting up different scenarios and watching them play out and somehow tweaking things so there's a slightly different response every time based on who's in the house. Um, the, the command thing, like to me, having that level of interactivity, you might as well have no interactivity at all. Like the watering of your guy, if you don't put a gauge on the screen to show like how much water he needs or how much water is left or anything like that, like, and maybe this is a thing that if you play, if you have this on for five or six hours and he starts to get thirsty, but again, you know, like I had this on several times. I didn't keep it on overnight because I was playing this on my real 600. But did they honestly expect people to leave this on their computers for hours and hours and hours when this is their only computer? It's not like this thing, it's not like you're multitasking going between different things. This is a game that has some really neat ideas and its day, its day has definitely arrived. When you look at when you look at games like The Sims 
or like remember the the little LCD screens? They look like VMUs that the kids had back in the day. The Toma, Toma yeah, Gachi. yeah, yeah. Like where you're feeding, you have to feed it every so often and stuff like that. Even games like Farmville, where everything is set on a timer and you've got to check in and do different things. This sort of like passive action uh, has is definitely in. In of course with the Sims, the Sims is the the you know the obvious example. I've never once played a Sims game in my life, so I don't know how those work. But I can only imagine that it's something similar to this. But anyway, this is a classic example of like, I like the idea. I like the presentation. The graphics are good. I think the graphics look look nice. You know, it's the kind of style, the art style that I like. Um, but I would I would have removed all of the interactivity and, and put some more people in the house. I think uh, if in our chat, uh, Paul Kitching summed it up perfectly. He said, in 1985, this was really good. By 87, when the Amiga version came out, it probably was not enough. I think that's, I think you've got something there. Because this game has its roots on the 8-bit systems. And this was uh, a curiosity, mm -hmm. right? This was, And this gets lit, mentioned on lists all the time, like these great pivotal games. And I can understand why, because they could say, and there's truth to this, that, that, that this ushered in The Sims. Uh, and games like that, and, there, and I have no doubt that this was, a, and I'm sure that's probably what uh, David Cray yeah, wanted, yeah. was some, you know, but, but there was, you know, you've got limitations of, I mean, this is on the Apple II, for God's sake, so you, you, you there was limitations there. Um, that said, uh, I think, I think this game could have been made better by a few simple things, and you sort of went in a certain direction, but let's say, uh, uh, let's say the oven catches fire and your guy's up in the loft. You should be some way to like say, Hey, right. The oven's on fire. The guy, yeah. Run. Or like, like he, my guy used to leave the front door open all the <laughs> yeah. time. TV on front right? door and open. The dog, He's an affront to mothers yeah, everywhere. And the dog would work. He did. And the dog would walk right up to the front door. And I'm like, you know, if I was making this game, that dog yeah, would leave. Yeah. Why? No dogs could just sit there and be like, look at that. He's going to leave. Also, my guy never interacted with his dog. He, that bothered my son mm -hmm. to no end. Mm -hmm. He's like, that dog wants to be petted, Dad. I'm like, well, it's not my fault, man. But they needed some kind of events to happen that you could help your guy get to. Or at least say, hey, go there. Because the funny thing about this, with, with, that, with that parser, with the type, ability to type in stuff, uh, it's almost pointless because you really have no direct contact with right. the guy. Like, you can type to him. He doesn't give a crap about that most of the time. He'll just do whatever he wants. Sometimes he'll, he'll listen to you, but a lot of times he just does what he wants. But what this guy does is just aimlessly walk around. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I know that screensaver you're talking about that with the guy on a desert island. Stuff would happen. He would do yeah. stuff. This guy just walks mm -hmm. around. A lot of times he'll... And he doesn't do anything that, like... I would have some funny stuff happen. Maybe stubs his toe. Maybe he falls down the right. stairs. Maybe he something yeah. happens, but nothing happens. And so I kept playing this game, waiting for something to happen, assuming that something would happen. But I mean, it. What this is is just an interactive. It's an interactive screensaver. You called it. And could you take the interaction out? You could, but you would have to spruce it up a little bit because who would want to sit and watch this for hours and hours? Just watch this guy go up and down the stairs. I, I, they tried to skirt the line, and maybe they didn't have a choice because of the technology they were using. They tried to make it interactive, but at the same time, the interaction is so limited that it's barely there. And so, when you, and so what you've got is a, a, a game that's not a game, and it's a, 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 a something that you just sort of look at. Like, I've loaded this up a bunch of times, and that's why I left it on. I'm like, Boat is going to ask me what I, what I saw. And I don't want to just say, I just saw my guy walk up down the stairs 600 times. I'm going to make sure I stay for the good part. And the good part never yeah. came. You know, Now, I'm not going to rail on this game or kill it because it's, it's, I, it's a cute game. It's a cute thing. If, for like, if you load this up on your old Atari, for example, boat, or, or, or you know what I'm saying, and, and, and you show this to your kid, the kid might watch this for mm -hmm. 10 minutes. You know, and that's, and I'll look at it for that. But, I mean, to, if I bought this thing at full price and came home, even back in the day, uh, I would be like, I would. this would be a no-buy for me. I, I mean, I know. And I yeah, know because this, there's, this there's really not like what they could have. I mean, there are a million ways 
I think maybe more than most games, I wish that I could go back in time and influence the development of this game. Because this yes. could have been something real special. Like, yeah. okay, here's something. Like, say that you're just hanging out in your room, okay? You got your computer in your room and you got your stereo. And, you know, you throw on a record, you put this game on, and this gives you something to watch while you're listening to the music. And maybe the game comes with, like, a little checklist. Like, you know, check this off when you see your guy do this or do that or something like yeah. that. You know, that yeah. would have been great. You, anything. Yeah. Give me give me anything. There's Yeah, fix dinner. Take a bath. Feed the dog. Take out the garbage. Get ready for work. Find the job. Go. He could have went out and yeah. came back. How, you know? You could even ask him, how was your work day? And that could be it sort would of the be interaction. So easy. Back yeah, from, it would be you know? so easy to, the, the parser's already there. It would be so easy for him to just put in, you know, a thousand random phrases for him to say in response to various questions. And it would liven things up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could use that parser. And Now, what I, something else I would do is like the typewriter gimmick, that's yeah. gone. Uh, because the guy can tap on the screen. And he can talk. When he talks, he, he talks. He talks in that Which computer is fine. gibberish, but it could easily, yeah. that's fine. But you could spell out exactly. what he's saying instead of the typing. Hey, uh, Aaron, uh, you know, man, I could go for a cold, I could go for a cold beer. Bam, you have a beer delivered yeah. to the sucker. You know, yeah. something. You know, but I mean, it's simple. And I'm guessing, Bo, because David Crane's such a genius. I'm guessing that the, the limitations of the, of the format that he made this on Mate, he says probably as good as he could have done at the time. That's my, my guess. My particular but, theory is that they expected this thing to be a bigger hit than it was, and they were going to introduce various expansions through additional discs, like you know, expansion discs. I don't know. I, I my get my guess would be maybe sequels. I don't see expansion discs happening. But the thing is, I look at this. There's there's two ways to look at it. We're looking at it like from the gamer's perspective. From the people that like you know that buy these virtual like uh, aquariums and stuff to watch on their PC when mm -hmm. that was a thing, you could certainly buy this thing and and put it on your computer and just and just watch it and let it just let mm -hmm. it run. You could do that, you know, uh, and and it would be the, as much fun as that. But if you're going to do that, you know, maybe charge a tenner for it. This is a game that's sort of out, you know, in the age when they released it for the Amiga. You can't release this for a 16-bit system and expect uh, uh, people to want to buy it. They've got to add more, and they didn't do it. And so I don't know how well it sold, but I'm guessing not not so well. You know, before, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of uh, wacky bits on this thing. Both mentioned about the, uh, uh, the you're, you're playing a girl in, in one of the uh, Japanese versions. This thing had an interesting cockpit protection boat on the on the ST. Mm. I don't know if you read, I don't know I if you read this. If you pirated this on the ST, the game would load, but the character would simply stand there knocking on the screen and wagging oh, his finger. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. Oh, no, oh, Boat, okay, get this. You were right, because I'd forgotten about this. According to High Score, which is a magazine or publication of some sort, add-ons were planned, such as diskettes filled with new furniture and a little computer people apartment in an apartment building. It's they very similar to The Sims, you know, in their endless parade of expansions. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you actually called that. Very, very good, Boat. Uh, this earned the uh, Zap 64 Gold Medal Award 1985. So, again, this was a big hit on the on the early 8-bit systems. It got a lot of love back in those days. And Will Wright uh, has mentioned playing this game and uh, receiving valuable feedback uh, on, the, uh, on the Sims from the designer of this game, Rich hmm. Gold. So he actually... He actually talks to some of the people that were responsible for this. Uh, Boat, have you heard of a game called Apple Town Story? No, I have not. That is the that is the port of this game to the family computer disk system, the Famicom okay. disk system. So that's what it's called over there. Uh, you know, reviews on this were limited, Boat. I mean, you know, proper reviews. Uh, Lemon gave this a 7.88. And I found one review from back in the day, and it was well after this had been released. Amiga User International gave this a 9 out of 10 in uh, January of 90. So this is well after. Did we get any Discord we did. We action We got a couple of Discord reviews. Zorglub right. writes, Since I heard about this game, I have been completely in love with the concept of having a computer dude move into my computer. I think it's strangely calming and comforting to watch my friend going about his own business in his little house. I find it amusing that he mocks me for typos. All in all, I find my friend yeah. Elliot nice to be around. 
We played a lot of poker during the week. My kids and wife think I'm insane for having the little guy on all the time next to my office computer, but I say, hey, look at as an aquarium. I try not to tell him that I enjoy clapping the dude when he's in his armchair. I used to have the C64 tape version. Now I have the Amiga version and the C64 house on a disc. Much better experience. Because of its original idea and concept for its time and its nice execution, I give this Amiga Tamagotchi 10 out of 10. A personal Ooh, favorite. Wow. In the top five. Wow. And Graham W. Bebke writes, I really haven't given this game nearly as much time as it deserves, and I believe you need a lot of time to get the most rewards from this game. I first saw it a long time ago on a C64 demo tape, and now looking at it again, you can definitely see how this went on to inspire a generation of simulation and life games to follow. My old Palm Zire had a game called Village Sim from the mid-2000s, which to me was inspired by this, but many more people would compare this to the more popular Sim series, especially with all the life commands and other interactions this game first had. David Crane was a great developer, 8 out of 10. Very popular, but you know, I just had a I had a uh, epiphany while you were reading those but So these guys supposedly come and live in your computer, right? So you know, I just upgraded my PC, mm -hmm. okay? So and, and you know, and the Amiga I've got now is all cleaned out, but a lot of these things would and you know, of course, this got released on multiple machines. What I would like to see David Crane do with all his genius is actually have this thing when you put it in, it appraises the condition of your PC. Like, mine had uh, four inches of cat hair in it, dust, dirt. And so my guy should be living in a dump. Right? That would be fun. Something else that would be great, if you're playing this on a real old mm -hmm. machine, he should live in, like, an economy apartment. And if you're playing this on a portable machine, he should live in one of those, like, coffin apartments, like, yeah. in Japan. I that's think the that's way, a, that's you, know, the way the, you do it. There are, there are so many ways that you can make this game for a new computer and make it rule. Like, I think tying the size of the house to your specs is amazing that's so and like when you upgrade <laughs> your ram like imagine sticking in a new yeah. stick of ram loading this game up it's like hey new car you know <laughs> that's it that's it or a, oh man i got a patio right. you know or a pool uh, i should mention but by the way i will say this because uh, uh, one of the discord guys said that he likes to sit, leave this on i remember when i was a kid do you remember these uh uh a lot of people talk about these but very few that i know owned them remember the old sea yeah, monkeys man. from back in I the never day had them, but did you ever no. order I did. I ordered some sea monkeys because they were in every oh, yeah. comic book. And I don't know, back panel, these suckers would be having a tea party. They'd be Their kids would be out running around. I was like, my God, I want to be in control of these little suckers. I want to rule them like mm -hmm. a king. And then you get them, and they're just little, I don't know what, shrimp yeah, or whatever. Shrimp. And they'd suck. Yeah. So I will say, this is uh, 50 steps above mm -hmm. that. If you want to just have somebody to, like, watch do stuff and occasionally kind of i mean you can't really abuse this guy you can't flush him on the toilet but you can at least kind of i don't know you can not feed him or whatever this is way up from the old sea monkeys day you don't see nobody getting sea monkeys anymore well, so i'm guessing there that's is a there's past, a but. very good documentary on youtube about the whole sea monkeys scam and the perpetrators of such scam it's fascinating fascinating yeah. story it was it was around yeah forever, i remember man. in boy's life every episode that and remember, remember so get, the hovercraft you can build from the vacuum cleaner and parts around the hole. Oh yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. I used to watch this show called Junkyard mm -hmm. Wars, and they built a, a hovercraft out of like old fans and crap and pieces of like styrofoam. So I believe it's possible, just not by someone yeah, like me. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm uh, such a pathetic, horrible hack, as someone said. Uh, eBay. This thing goes for some big dough, Boaster. Uh, there were uh, only two I saw up. One was going for forty-four bucks, and one was going for eighty bucks. Uh, these are in the UK, mm. so if you're at, looking to pick this up, bring the old checkbook boat. Well, Aaron, before we move on to the uh, the Patreon song this week, I do want to thank our oh, yes. uh, our people that have joined us live in Twitch today. Uh, we always enjoy when people come on and watch us in real time, participate in the chat. Mitsuyama, yes. Baud Band is here, Rushi MSX, Ooh. Uber Scuba Diver, Danny the GFP, Christian Russell, Amiga Bill is joining us today. 
Always. Uh, always. Edvin Helland is here. Duncan Styles. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching us live. You can watch us live every Friday night at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. We want to thank our Twitch subscribers. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber uh, and uh, you want to support the channel, you can do so for free by going over to Twitch and just hitting our channel and clicking on subscribe. Frodo NL, Still Adolescing, Rushi MSX, Wing Chun Wolf, G Vebke, I am Dan for Chris Folds, Go To Go Sub, Mitsuyama, The Slow Norris, Retro Jerry, Creepy Dead Boy, Spy Hunter, UK 2016, Buck Owens, Johnny Renegade, Judge Dave, and Christian Russell. Thank you, guys. You know, Rushi says he had he had some sea monkeys. I don't, I believe mm. it. Knowing Rushi like I do, so I bet there's a, more than a few people in this chat room that that bought sea monkeys. There's a lot of older guys yeah. in here, but I'd say that I'm not the yeah, only one. I agree with you. And uh, last week, Aaron, uh, our Patreon song. Uh, we had a bunch of, uh, of uh, correct entries. It was, uh, the name of the song was All the Young Dudes, originally by Mott the Hoople. Mott the yeah. Hoople. I think Bowie was uh, Bowie involved wrote in the, Bowie wrote the song. song. Yeah, he wrote it for Mott the Hoople. You know, Mott the Hoople didn't do a whole lot of songs that I've heard, but that is a great song. That was quite an epic event last yeah, week, but you'll be hard-pressed to top it. Well, my before we see how, if I was able to top it or not, we want to read the correct names of the people that wrote in. Uh, Paul Kitchen got it right. Edvin Helland, Christian Russell, Buck Owens, Zebedee's Magic Roundabout, The Slow Norris, and Mitsuyama. Uh, you guys, congratulations. A job well done. I actually drew from the original recording instead of going with the Mata Hoople version. Uh, I did the uh, David Bowie and Billy Corgan version from 1997, which rocks a little harder. Oh, I, I've oh never you got to check it out. Boat. It's awesome. Oh, so, man. Uh, we want to thank our brand new supporter this week uh, over at Patreon, jo- Joel Fuchs. Welcome to the fold. The Fuchs. And uh, if you know this week's Patreon song challenge, send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. Here we go. Take this beer in the old man cave. Lindo 70, he 
Spotify, I'm Christopher Hassan, Ravi Abbott, Chris Foltz, Dreamcatcher, Laura Giroux, Grand P, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C, Brian Jones. Duncan Styles, tapes from the crib, Josh Man, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THG, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy, Home Bush, Daniel Bankston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Horns, Pigs is a Don, Cure, Cure, Patreon's all right, Discord's all right, Twitch is all right, yeah! All right, <laughs> so if you know the name of that song, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com and I will read your name as a winner on the, on the next episode. So, speaking of the next episode, Aaron. Yeah, sorry, I need a second. <laughs> Woo! We, holy, smokes. we are going to be, we're going to, we're going to take a trip to Middle Earth. We're going to play, <laughs> we're going to play Lord of the Rings, Aaron. That'd be easy if we were if we were yeah. little people, we'd be yeah, good to get. We were a little computer people. <laughs> um, so this was uh, Brutal Barracuda. He uh, he's, he suggested this one, and the Amigos Game Selection Committee. Uh, voted on it so uh yeah i i knew nothing about this game i don't know if it's a role-playing game if it's an action adventure so if, i don't know anything about it either i've never played yeah, it man yeah if it's a uh a, you know romantic visual novel who knows <laughs> if it's that i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> i'll be honest with you all right well thanks as always everybody for watching we will see you next week until then adios adios <laughs>